My people, comrades and friends, welcome to another episode of The Week with me, Comrade Fatso. And it's been an epic week. General Gouveia said, do as I say, not as I do. Demolitions in Harare continued and Hopewell Chingono started at war. We also caught up with the General Secretary of the MDC Youth Assembly, Comrade Gift Ostalos. But first, this. Comrades, you remember when the Commander-in-Chief of the Health Forces said this? We will not export our patients. We will not make referrals to our patients. It's everybody. Ministers are only about 20. But those who have uh, been going out, out, it's you, you, me, isn't it? All together. That, that export bill was too high. And remember when I said this? You heard it here first, comrades. The VP is never going outside the country again for medical treatment. Oh, well, guess who just popped out of the country for just a little bit of some medical tourism? Yep, the number one medical tourist himself, Constantino Chiwenga. Chiwenga has allegedly been flown out to China for treatment just months after saying the government was going to ban medical tourism. Wait, was it also last week when Monaco Mutangwa had a lavish party that went way beyond curfew with loads of maskless people in attendance. And now, a Minister of Health doesn't want to be seen in his own hospitals or trust the doctors that he doesn't want to pay. Meanwhile, the mother of his children is being dragged to court on a stretcher bed. It honestly feels like we're watching the final season of a gripping TV drama. I just can't tell if it's the end of season 40 or the end of the whole TV show itself. Of course, it's a Zanupiev drama, so it would be called Scandal. Or, or maybe Generations, because ah, these comrades have been ruling for generations, eh? The ZRP have come out guns blazing, threatening those who are guilty of cyberbullying. Except the ZRP definition of cyberbullying seems to be those who attack the hurmet. Eh? The ZRP said arrests were imminent for unnamed suspects who had been harassing and threatening government officials on social media. I mean, how can us lowly social media dark forces ever bully the bullies? It's always interesting to see the things that the ZRP decides to speak on. There could be a robbery happening right now in broad daylight outside Central Police Station. But as long as you are wearing a scarf, 
around your neck or you've got a photograph with someone who's wearing a scarf you might as well be harry potter under the invisibility cloak but the moment they see or hear a hashtag they turn into the cia and fbi combined cia fbi is it a I guess it makes sense though, because the ZRP cannot afford to let these hashtags turn into hashtags. Get it? And this guy. Boom. 2020 is drawing to a close, and it was supposed to be a year of action, according to the MDC Alliance. So we decided to catch up with the MDC Youthy and stone thrower Comrade Ostalos. Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, welcome to a very special interview where we are joined by a stone thrower, a youthy, and also the MDC Youth Assembly General Secretary, Comrade Gift Ostalos. Comrade Ostalos, welcome to the week. Uh, revolutionary greetings, Comrade Fatso, revolutionary greetings, fellow citizens and honor to be here to correspondate on ideas to take our country forward. So, Comrade, that maybe makes me ask the first question. Why are you so uh, infamous for these uh, long-winded revolutionary greetings? You former Zinasu comrades, you love to adumbrate so much, eh? <laughs> no, you see, a revolutionary salutation is an important gesture that reflects on who we are. We are a people that are involved in a struggle for change, a struggle for transformation, to change society. So when we give revolutionary salutation, we are taking people to understand the impetus and the central strategic objective of our struggle that we are freedom fighters. Yeah, all right, come on, just give me a dictionary, I'll just check what he said. <laughs> so I see you today, Wakapeka work suit. Eh? Yeah. You're coming today wearing a work suit. Uh, as you've been working on a construction site, why, uh, why, why this uniform? But the, the work suit is a reflection of the people that we are. We are young people preparing ourselves to be the next working class under the capable leadership of our good news and chairman. So, so we are the working class in progress. Mm -hmm. EFF. So, so you, you're saying you're ready to take over, but right now the country is, is burning. Corruption, poverty, mass unemployment. What is the MDC Youth Assembly doing to try and bring about some form of change? Apart from I'm a press conference and locking up Impala employees, what are you guys actually doing? I think that's an important question because there's consensus within the broader society that things are not well in our country from our politics, our economy, and our social uh, sector. The MDC Youth Assembly's programming is very simple. We are going back to basics because we believe that uh, the party has been under siege. We are a banned organization. Our headquarters have been taken. Our deployees were removed from parliament illegally. You know, we are not allowed to gather. We are not allowed to exercise the constitutionally guaranteed right to protest. Mm -hmm. um, in this country. So we're literally and metaphorically a band organization. So what we have done is that our revolution must go back to basis, which is mass mobilization. Anything we are doing is going back to the People's Convention of 1999. Anything we are going is going back to the grassroots and mobilizing young people so that we can begin to initiate our revolution for the betterment of our society. Outside that, um, the MDC, um, we must appreciate, as Magaisa puts it, it's been a very terrible and tough year for our organization and we have to go back to basic rebuild our organization rebuild our structures and prepare to occupy the central places like the streets and ensure that we bring change to our country okay so you're talking about bringing about the, the betterment of you know of the people but i think it's also important uh, as, as, as politicians as political activists to practice what what you preach and so what makes the mdc alliance different from zanu pf Considering there's massive, uh, we've you know we've had you know scandals of MDC councillors nationwide accused of corruption. Even the MDC Alliance Mayor Jacob Mafume has recently been locked up on corruption charges. So what's the, what's yeah, the difference? I, I think that the most important point, uh, Comrade Fatso, is to understand that the intention by the regime in Harare is to strike um, moral equivalence to say because ZANU-PF is corrupt and we must arrest uh, MDC officials so that we strike moral equivalence that these organizations are the same. There's five heights of corruption in this country and you won't find the MDC there in pharmaceuticals, in land, um, in, in, um, in a fuel, you know what's happening in fuel, mm -hmm. get scandal, you know. So, so these areas are where ZANU-PF has been involved in looting 
agriculture, command agriculture is one height of corruption in this country. There's huge corruption in the education sector. So the broader challenge that we have now at the present moment that ZANU-PF now wants to drag the MDC because Jacob Mafume is not criminal. Jacob Mafume is just being accused that you passed land. He doesn't pass away land. Harare City Council and all the councils in, in this country are just ceremonial. They don't have executive powers, they don't have control of their financial um, um, books, you know, and everything. And again, the central government is permanently interfering with council business. If you look at the recent demolition of houses, it's an act by central government and the provincial uh, governor in Harare. So the problem that we are facing as a society is that ZANU-PF has failed and the only thing that they have to do is to discredit the alternative. So the MDC has been attacked, but as if that is not enough, they are going to strike even our own image in society to say these ones are corrupt just like us. They have not denied their involvement in corruption. You, you have seen how Hopo has exposed a lot of central government officials in corruption. So them, this is a clean organization, incapable because of our moral value system as an organization. We can't be corrupt, we can't be involved in corruption as an alternative movement. Mm. Uh, we'll see when you get into power, we'll double check. Comrade Ostalos, we're now in the rainy season, okay? So if ZANU-PF was a plant, what kind of plant would it be and why? I think uh, ZANU-PF will be this, uh, there's this terrible plant that smells like a skunk, I forgot its name, mm. uh, that usually blooms during the rainy season. It's terrible uh, and I think that at this juncture, ZANU-PF will be that plant. Why would it be that plant? Because I think everything else about ZANPF is literally metaphorically smelling. Mm. Literally, you can see Patrick Chinamasa, a remnant of the liberation struggle, is trying to cover up for not being a freedom fighter by mm. vomiting dross every time he opens his mouth and is intoxicating people around them. Tubo is a victim of the same and these young emerging stars in ZANPF. So the smell goes beyond the plant itself. It literally affects those around despite that they are not part of the plant. So those around then become victims of this vicious smell by this terrible plant that presents itself during the rainy season. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the ZANUPF is a smelly plant. Right, so if you were to get a phone call right now on your cellular phone from your former ZANASU comrade and the current Director of Information and Publicity at ZANUPF, Comrade Tafadzo Mgwadi, what would you say to him? He's a former president of the union. I will tell him that uh, you must be very cautious. ZANUPF is his own children. Don't be a representative of kakistocracy. The present is holding the future in suffocation. You can't be parcel and parcel of that generation that is oppressive, that is vicious. Uh, as a former a student leader who was conscious about the ethos of the National Democratic Revolution. So I think that at some point, conscience has to visit him so that he understands the broader generational responsibility that is on his shoulders outside the framework of kakistocracy under Emerson Nanga. But don't you think at least he's, he's got uh, quite a good way with journalists? I saw him recently, uh, some weeks back on Al Jazeera, just saying, you know, fuck, fuck, Shema, fuck, fuck. I think he's got quite an interesting way of. He, he's not with from that tradition because he's one person who understands the sanctity of media and journalism, mm. that they are important part of society. But because he has been around a system that is very brutal, a system that is, does not recognize fundamental freedoms, in particular rights for journalists, that's why he is the probity to insult a journalist in cameras and an international uh, a pers a journalist of that nature. So I think that is the intoxic culture within the regime in, in Harare. So that is the challenge that uh, he faces and that's why I constantly advise him that conscious must visit him so that he understand where he comes from, so that he's able to see where he's supposed to be going. Not in Zanapir, not in a system that is oppressive, that abducts and tortures people in mid-daylight. Mm. Ah, well, you never know. Maybe we'll do a Jonathan Moyo and flip-flop over to the MDC <laughs> sometime soon. <laughs> we now move on to the multiple choice round. Your favorite round, comrade. You know you're a student, <laughs> former student leader. You went to university, you went to school. So, multiple choice. It's either or. Okay. Which of the following do you prefer? Impala or Rooster? <laughs> None of the above. Rigged elections or illegal demolitions? I think that uh, I prefer the respect of the will of the people. So I don't choose, I can't choose demolitions and I can't choose uh, rigged elections. 
Douglas Monzora or Toko Kupe. I know it's a tough I know it's a tough one for you, eh? Yeah. No, I would rather go with my sister from Blaue Metropolitan Province, Togzan Kupe. Douglas Monzora is West. <laughs> All right. Fuel Q or Bank Q? I think a, a, a Bank Q is better because there is a light in the end of the queue. <laughs> <laughs> Abduction or arrest? I would rather spend my time in the group in maximum prison than to be in Zambia of Georgia Chambers. Jam Master or Van Choga? Of course, uh, everyone goes for Jam Master despite his action to kick out the supporter. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so in, in, in the final question I want to I ask you, this year, 2020, it's been a crazy year. But, I mean, we heard a lot from, you know, from your president, Chamisa, uh, that it was to be a year of action. And now the year, the year is nearly wrapped up. Uh, we're in December, everyone's getting ready for Xmas, if there even is an Xmas this year. So the question is, this so-called year of action is, 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 is done, finished. Not too much action, not too much action happened. What is the MDC's plan for 2021? The plan of the MDC is very simple. We have to start organizing our people. The 2020 has, has taught us very important issues. That number one, it's possible in politics to operate without you know, your rights, fundamental rights being recognized, maybe because of COVID and other reasons we have not been allowed to gather. And we must be finding new ways of organizing society. So 2021 must be about organizing society and organizing people for one thing, and action, and that thing is action. And it's very difficult because they're going to be arrested, they're going to be tortured, they're going to be legal detentions, arrest, you know, and so forth. And we have prepared ourselves uh, for that. So 2021, you must brace up for some of us being in group for uh, not, uh, you know, shorter periods. You must brace up for losing some of our compatriots in the fight for freedom because as a generation, we've come at a stage, and this is a commitment that I speak on behalf of the Youth Assembly that we've prepared ourselves to surrender you know, ourselves in this fight because there is no other way. Elections in this country are being rigged. Elections have been rendered useless. Democracy under authoritarian tutelage is impossible. So the only way um, that we have to execute our struggle as young people is to occupy the streets and escalate the struggle towards the doorstep of dictatorship. And this is a task that is very difficult and that's why we're going back to basic to mobilize our people because I can't go to the streets alone. I can't go to the streets without the majority of young people in this country who are the major victims of corruption, of nihilism, of kleptocracy under Emerson Nangako. So the first immediate task, if you look at the framework of the Marxist guerrilla in this country, it was anchored on people power. So our first responsibility is to mobilize our people. That's why we have a million youth voices for change. We are not mobilizing those people for elections. We are not mobilizing those people to become voters. We are mobilizing those people to speak out and speak truth to power. And that is the only way that is going to liberate our generation. And I speak on behalf of the detected masses of my own generation. And we are prepared to do so. So come 2021, ED must expect us. ZANPEF and all the corrupt elements in this country must expect us. Right. Well, you heard it here first. We'll be checking in with you in 2021. Anzi, Zanu PF must expect the MDC youth is. So, Comrade Rostalos, thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Thank you very much. Aluta Kondra Moy. Ahoy. Thank you. And Futsek. Award winning journalist Hopewell Chimono torched a storm on Twitter this week when he called young people useless and lacking political consciousness. Ah, Comrade. Sure, Ere. This is because Chimono had noted that popular comedian and part-time prophet Pashon Java had a larger social media audience than activist Namatai Kwekweza. I mean, I hear you, Hopewell, but is it fair to launch an attack on young people based on social media following? Considering that it's the same youthies that were running the hashtag Free Hopewell. Could young people be doing more to participate in national processes and civic activism? Definitely. Is this the way to get them to do it? Absolutely not. No one wants to be talked down to, not even you. And using such inflammatory language is only going to alienate these young people and distract from the real issues at hand. We also need to get rid of this fighting for your freedom nonsense. That's ZANU PF talk, and I hope will. 
We don't want to wind up with another generation of Madaras who go around saying we died for this country. We all need to play our part in building a better and more just Zimbabwe. And we need to realize that there are no gods of this struggle. The question on a lot of people's lips is, what's up with Joyce Mujuru? Photos circulated of a skinny, bald-headed Joyce Mujuru and social media exploded with rumors and makuas. Hey, she's sick. Hey, Joy Arpuara. Hey, Apera Chichichi. Azirimbinga. Asichinayama. The answer is simple. She left Zanu PF, started working out, and now she's living her best life as a hip gogo. That's according to her son, Wellens Mujuru. I mean, just imagine how much weight you would lose if you didn't have to sit in Politburo meetings all your life deciding which one of you gets a COVID tender. It's miraculous. She went from Teorai Ropa to Teorai Makilos. Hey! I wonder how much weight Obed Mpofu would lose if he was kicked out of Zanu PF sometime. 40 kilos. Man. Next! Okay, auntie. Is this proper protocol? Uh, I'm going abroad to attend to a debilitating situation. It's debilitating. Debilitating situation. Sir, I do not the game. I'm going to go there for as long as the situation allows me. Passport in your school. I tell you to stamp. You stamp. Simple. It will work. Simple. Stamp. I want to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to go. I've got a debilitating situation that needs to be attended to. Equals you know. Plus muruku pizza mno. Debilitating. Plus a muruku pizza mne ma ekon. Let's mash it up. Kuru mita kuru mita kuru mita kuru. Let's mash it up. We will attend to this matter quickly. Mm -hmm. You don't know, Andy. You don't know. You don't know. You're lost. You're lost. You're lost. Simple. Right now, I don't have time for this. Situation is still very. Mira, Stolen. Stolen. Yes, she. Chef. 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 Is Thank you, sir. Watch out. Get number three, chef. Yeah. Oh, you won't pay here. Gouverneur. Gouverneur. Vice President, you won't pay That's what you told me last night. Ah, last time we were going to Ah, you were going to pay. I want to help. I'm a manager. Chef, get number three, chef. Please do it. What's your number? Sorry. So, what's your number? Sorry, chef. Moyo. The boy around on camera won't bend out to you. Hey. Name of travel. Destination China. People's medical key. The good news is that the COVID vaccine is finally here. The bad news is that it's not exactly here, here. It's more like Kunana UK and USA. Because rich countries have bought up 53% of the most promising vaccines which means that 9 out of 10 people in poor countries will miss out on inoculation. Canada allegedly has enough vaccines to inoculate each citizen 5 times. Choire, this is unacceptable, especially because most of the vaccines were developed with public money, so they should be a global public good. Unzai my patents tite sampi. Canada, Yaguita Chis Zanu PF Manj. This week, we celebrate Titi Dangaremba, the Zimbabwean writer, filmmaker, and cultural activist. This year, Titi made it into the BBC World 100 Influential and Inspiring Women from Around the World. 
Saka, we celebrate you, Titi. Shout out to you. Keep inspiring the young women. It's festive season and it's a time to give. If you know of any child born with a cleft lip or palate, Smile Train offers free surgery. Remember, this is a condition that's not caused by a curse by some evil spirits. It can happen to anyone. Visit a Smile Train partner hospital or contact them on these numbers. Let's make some kids smile this Xmas. Thanks for joining us on the week. Follow Magamba TV on social media. I've been Comrade Fatso. You have been the people. This has been the week. Thank you. I just need to pop over to China for a little bit of some surgery for tech. <laughs>